know, it's been a while and then it's, it, um, I'm going to do uh, something a little bit different today, but I want to talk uh, a little bit about the format uh, going forward. Um, so one of the, uh, the things that, and we're going to be probably going to be like our, one of the first um, shiurim, <clears throat> we are going to have uh, the opportunity also to do that in person. So today the class is happening only in Zoom. Starting next week, we're going to have an option. We have a small space in the silver sukkah um, to do that. Those who are interested uh, to come and do that in person, well, I think we have a space for 10 individuals. And ov obviously, we're going to do it in Zoom as well. Um, but those who would like to come and to do that in person, we um, are going to do that uh, as well. That's uh, starting from uh, next week. I know some uh, asked me about that. So Will it be outdoors? I'm sorry? Yeah, it's outdoors. Will it be outdoors? It's outside. It's outside. And of course, like all the, um, all the protocols that we have here, uh, uh, with regards to social distancing, face covers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, uh, it's in the sukkah, um, the small sukkah, um, like by the alley. So, so that's, uh, that's one thing. So it'll be nice if we have some of you, those who feel comfortable, uh, joining us in person, but we're going to continue doing that on Zoom as well. Um, so those who would like to continue this format, is, it's going to be available. Um, what, um, so this is obviously our, our new format. Um, and uh, it's a new format, but um, we have um, not that uh, many women to cover until we actually <coughs> complete the entire Bible. Believe it or not, uh, this series has been going on for uh, five years or so, and uh, we covered uh, about a hundred figures so far, um, at least, and uh, it's been uh, quite a journey. We are, don't worry, because once we finish this series, I'm going to start a new series, so don't worry about that, and it's going to be something that is going to be different and, and, and exciting, I think. Um, what I want to do today <clears throat> is um, to go into um, something that after, um, after um, completing and preparing the, uh, the class, I realized that we actually discussed that about five years ago. Um, and that tells you that if I didn't remember what we did five years ago, so and that a lot of you don't remember. Um, and the idea for that came from this Torah portion, and, and it's like it struck me um, that uh, it would be a nice uh, way to kind of resume uh, based on on something current, um, and then we're going to continue with our. Uh, the new figures that we have in that. So I have to check my lists better before jumping into something, but um, it's definitely going to be a different perspective and it's going to be uh, different what we did uh, five years ago. Even if uh, you remember parts of it, I'm sure it's going to be um, interesting this time. So um, I didn't send you sources because um, it's impractical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I have, uh, instead of in a document, I put all the uh, sources in a uh, PowerPoint presentation. So it's going to be easier for everybody to watch uh, the sources. And what I would like to do is to jump right into that stuff. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Should we should we mute? Yes, uh, it's better, but you don't have to. I mean, look, let's put it this way. Let's put yourself put yourself on mute, and if you have a um, a question, just unmute yourself and ask. How's that? Now, um, everybody, 
everybody see the my screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Fine. So what I would like to do is I want to talk about the wife slash sister of kind. So as you know, this week we started Parashat Bereshit. Very nice. Everybody knows the story of Parashat Bereshit, creation of the world, and part of creation was the creation of Adam and Eve. And we know that Adam and Eve had a bunch of kids. They had Cain, they had Hevel. Um, Cain kills Hevel. We're going to talk about that in a minute, a little bit. And um, later on, they had also another son called Shet. And, um, and they all had descendants. Right? So let's take a look at, uh, at the verses here for a sec. I just like uh, put a collection of the verses here. Right? So Adam and Eve had one child, the first child named Cain. Later on, So then had another child, Abel, and uh, he was a shepherd, and Cain was a farmer, basically. He was growing stuff. And then I skip a couple of uh, verses to verse 17, the same chapter, chapter 4, and it says, Vayeda Cain et ishto, vatar bateled et chanoch. Right? Cain had a child named Hanoch. And he built a city and he named the city after his son Hanoch. Okay, uh, but so far I learned that what? That Adam and Eve had Cain, then they had Hevel, and then all of a sudden Cain has a wife, and not only that he has a wife, they have a kid together. So where did she come from? I mean, Adam and Eve were the only humans exactly. in the world. So where were this, this, this wife came from? So you will uh, not surprise to learn that this is not a, uh, a, uh, a question that only in my mind, but rather this is a question that was already asked many times. And the Torah Mima says the following very clearly. Hevel and Kain, where did they have those wives to start the world? Like, you know, they had kids. As far as I know, you can't have kids without having a, a woman, okay? Um, as far as I, the last time I checked, men cannot conceive. Where did they, you know, so where those wives came from? Not only that, here's the, uh, the, uh, the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, very interesting. I'm here in the second source. Mipnei ma lo nasa adam et bito. Why didn't Adam marry his own daughter? What? What are you talking about, his own daughter? Forget about the, the, the idea of like, you know, that people don't marry their own kids, but uh, w w w what kind of daughter? W where is she coming from? We just learned that Eve gave birth to Cain and Hevel. So what, is, what, what kind of daughter are we talking about? Where is she coming from? And the Gemara continues and explains. When Eve ate from the tree, or the, the fruit of the tree of knowledge, she was supposed to die immediately. She was supposed, like, part of the punishment was death and immediately. Ah. Ve'i mishum adam, shaya shawui belo isha, haya yacholi kach bito, Okay, 
the rabbis already many, many times explained to us, and the, the, actually based on what the Torah itself tells us, Lo tov heyot ha'adam levado, right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, it's not good for men to be alone, e'eselo ezer kenegdo, therefore he was created, right? Meaning, God understands that there's, this is a human basic need for people to be together, to live with somebody. It's not only for the purpose of procreation, it's also people need to live together. This is, this is part of human nature. And therefore, according to this Midrash that we just read, if part of the punishment for Eve is death immediately after eating from the fruit, then it means that Adam is going to be alone. Right? That's a problem because God said about Adam himself, So he needs company. He needs to be with somebody. So the Midrash continues and says, well, he could have, you know, this is before civilization, this is before all the laws, before like all that kind of stuff, you know, so why didn't, you know, then he was or should have been able to be with his own daughter. And the Gemara, and the, 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 uh, the Midrash continues and, and summarizes, said, um, seek? no, that's not going to work. Why? Not because it's... There is no doctor. No. Apparently there was, otherwise they wouldn't bring that as an option. We're gonna, gonna figure out in a minute where this daughter is coming from and why the Torah doesn't mention that. But what's the conclusion? What is the purpose that Adam was not able to marry that daughter? daughter? So Cain will have a wife. So Cain will have a wife and who is that wife? His own sister. And the Gemara continues, and the Gemara says, what? Ki amarti olam chesed yibane. Okay, that's a pasuk from Tehillim. And the Gemara explains that this is the foundation, this is the um, vehicle through which the world was built. Ki amarti, God said, olam, the world, chesed yibane. The world is going to be built on chesed. Now, we translate chesed as kindness. You know, good things that we do to each other. But here in this particular incident, the understanding is different. They take the word chesed and base it on a different verse. There's a pasuk in Sefer Vayikra that says the following, all the prohibited relations, a person who is going to be with his own sister, either the daughter of his father or his mother or both. How does it call? Chesedhu. It's called Chesed. Okay, the translation here is disgrace. And our understanding, yes, is something along that line. But in our terminology, chesed is something that is actually positive. Right? So how something that is positive, something that we translate as positive as chesed, as kindness, is being translated into disgrace, that's a different story. But you understand why the Midrash uses that term. The world is going to be built on chesed. What is it that chesed? It's that story. It's that relations to which we um, do, that it is prohibited to us, that we translate as disgrace. This is something that is a taboo, right? Your own sister or in the case of this Midrash, your own daughter. But that is 
a foundation. That was something that was needed in order to build the world. Now, I'm just going to digress for a second and talk about that word. If you do look at that word, chesed, and you try to um, and you try to understand where it comes from that it is such a positive word in our terminology, but in this context is something that is a big no-no, how that's possible, what's going on. Here's uh, my theory. My theory is that um, every time you look, and you can check me out, um, every time you see that word in the Bible, you will see that the word chesed means going above and beyond, or not only going above and beyond, it's breaking the borders or the walls. What does it mean? When I do chesed to you, okay, if I have a friend who is sick and I go with a, a bowl of chicken soup, or I do something kind for somebody, I don't have to do it. I'm not obligated, right? I do something that we call lifnim shuratadin. I break the walls between us. I break the wall of, let's call it expected social, right? This is just a neighbor. This is a strength. That's not somebody that I owe anything to. But when I do that with no reason for a reward or something or anything in exchange, that's a true chesed. Why? Because I was able to break the structure, the social structure, and I do something, right? God forbid, in a funeral, what do we do? When we bury somebody, we call it chesed shel emet, the true oh. Right, deed of chesed, the true kindness. Why? Because the person who is dead cannot repay me. Right? So I was able to, the logic says, you're going to do something to somebody only if you get something out of it. Something in exchange. In those cases, I get nothing in exchange. Right? So I'm breaking those taboos. I'm breaking those structures. So every time I break the wall, every time I do something that is goes beyond that, I, that is not, that is um, uh, kind of erases or breaks the limits, it's called chesed. So now you understand why the Torah used, the, the Chachamim and the Midrash also use the word chesed here. Because being with your daughter or being with your sister is a taboo, it's a no. Breaking that is going to be a chesed. Not in our understanding of chesed, but you understand how the word became what it is in our terminology. Okay? Now that you've seen my face for a minute or two, I'm going to go back to the slides. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, there we go. Next. So this wife of kind, sister slash wife of kind, is the first hidden women, woman in the Bible. Um, and... Um, it's interesting, by the way, that the, um, the Ibn Ezra says, the Ibn Ezra says, eshet kain. Those who ask who was the wife of Cain, What's the point of that question? He says, who cares? Ba'adam, ba'yoled, banim, uvanot, kulam. The Pasuk says later on that Adam had sons and daughters. That's it. Who cares? what was her name and what, like how she became and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But she is nonetheless our first, the, probably the, the first hidden woman in the Bible. And um, we don't know her name. We'll see that 
I was able to find her name actually. Um, and it's kind of unusual because in that particular um, family, um, we know the names when they are mentioned. Like for example, Lemech, a couple of generations later, Lemech had two wives, two wives, one the name of Ada, the other one her name was Tzila. And the thing is that um, Rashi on the spot says, two women, meaning in that generation, the generation of the flood, that was the norm. They had two wives. Uh, what does it mean? It means that in the previous generations, i.e. in the generation of Cain and all those generations up until the generation of the flood, Lamech, I think, was like sixth generation of Cain. The norm was, up until then, to have only one wife. Unlike Lamech and that generation, that was already the norm became two wives. Okay, going back to that question, where this wife comes from. So we're gonna see a bunch of opinions here. Here's the Midrash in Yalkuchi, Moni says the following. Rav Meshaya Amar, Nolad Kain, Kain was born, Ve'ishto te'omato imo, together with Kain, his wife, his twin was born with him. Benolad Hevel Veishto, same goes for Hevel. Okay, so we have this opinion of Rabbi Meshaya. He says, well, guess what? You know where those ladies came from? Cain had a twin, and Hevel also had a twin. So, yes, the Torah doesn't recall it, but we're going to deal with that in a second, why the Torah doesn't recall or how those rabbis learned that. But Cain was not born alone. He had a twin sister. Same goes for him. Okay. Rabbi Tzadok Omer, Nichnesa sinak dola belibo shal Cain al minchato shanit ratzet. Rabbi Tzadok brings another story. You remember that story of the, the fight or the, you know, between Hevel and Cain? right? Resolved in the murder of Hevel. So he said, you know why? What really going on here? Not only the Korban, the fact that God accepted the Korban of Hevel, but not of Cain. He said, there's something else. He said, that's one thing. The fact that God accepted the Mincha, the Korban of Hevel, but not of Cain, that's already one thing. But that was kind of like the last you know what was going on over there? He said also that the twin sister of Hevel was good looking. I always like when I read this, this Midrash, it said like I find it funny because Yafa Banashim, I mean the whole total according to this there were like only two women in the whole world. So, you know, I have 50% of being like the most beautiful <laughs> woman in the world, but it's nonetheless, anyway. So um, the Hevel's twin was a better good looking than the one of Cain, and therefore Cain wanted her. And so that was already bubbling, bubbling there. And then when, the whole thing with the Korban happened, he killed him. Now, that's all nice and dandy, but the real question in my mind is, if the Torah doesn't tell us anything about those twin sisters, where those rabbis take, where they're learning from? What is, like, based on what? So here's the Bereshit Rabbah, the, the Midrash, that um, kind of shed light on, um, on the um, process of how those Midrashim are, are um, learned and how um, they were um, written. The Pasuk said, et Kain et Achiv et Hevel. Right? et Kain et Achiv et Hevel. That's three times, 
בסדר, גימל אתים, ריבועים הם. I think it's Ayala. Yeah, no more. No more, okay. No more, everybody can wait. Okay. <laughs> so, the, the, it's very unusual language for the Pasuk to have et, et, et. I mean, we know that the Torah doesn't add words with no reason. So, yeah. why, why we have this very unusual kind of lengthy uh, language that makes no sense? And what the rabbis in the Midrash learned, they said, ah, oh, you know why it has et, et, et? It says, gimel etim, three times the word et, ribuyim hem. Means comes to add something, a new piece of information. Melamed, come to teach us. Shete oma noldaim kain. Kain had a twin sister. Vim hevel noldu shtaim. Meaning? Hevel didn't have only one twin sister, he had two. It was a triplets, apparently. Right in the Pasuk that we read in the beginning, or earlier, it says, Vatosef laledet. And she continued, and she then continued to give birth. And they're saying, oh, why just let's say she gave birth? What does it continue? Right? So that's what they're trying to say. Vatosef. Vatosef, that comes to teach us additional something. What was the addition? So one is the et, right? The second et. And then the Vatosef is, is another. So it's a triplets, two girls and a boy, heaven. Amarabihuna, a different opinion. Teomaya teran noldaim hevel. So they agree, said like, Huna says that hevel had two twin sisters. And not only that, זה אומר אני נוטלה שאני בכור, וזה אומר אני נוטלה שנולדה אימי, ומתוך כך ויקום קין. What Rabbi Huna is trying to teach us here, he's saying, I'm going to tell you, not only that Hevel had two twin sisters, but that will explain why Cain killed Hevel. If you remember, the Pasuk itself is very, very unclear. I want to go to that Pasuk for a second. Right? Um, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So, Hevel and Kain bring their korbanot, and Hevel's korban is being accepted. Kain, no, and God says to Kain, whatever he says to him, Lama haralach, why you feel bad? Halom titiv said, bim lo titiv. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Vayom el Kain el Hevel achiv. And then Kain said to Hevel, we don't know what. The Pasuk doesn't say anything. So he said to him something. Vayi biyotam basadeh. And then when they were in the field, Kain, Kain, got up and killed Hevel. So the rabbis were perplexed about this pasuk. What is it that he told them? Okay, we're going to deal with that in a minute, um, or more than a minute, uh, what was exactly the discussion. But according to Rav Huna, the fight was not like what here Rabbi Tzadok says, that, Heve, that Kain wanted the more beautiful girl, i.e. Hevel's twin. But rather, Hevel had two twins, and they were fighting who's going to have two wives. Kain says, I'm the firstborn, therefore I have the right to have the extra wife. I have, you know, the right for this, for this third girl, the third sister. And Hevel says, no, she was born with me, she's my twin, and therefore... I'm going to have her. And therefore, they had a fight. And that's the nature of their, you know, what they fought about and kind killed him. Okay. Now, Barbanel, who is much more rationalist, is trying to deal with this, um, 
uh, thing that we mentioned in terms of the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Batosef Laledet. Remember this Pasuk that we said here? Batosef Laledet. Continue to give birth. So the Barbanel says, what does it mean, Batosef Laledet? The fact that the Torah says, Batosef Laledet, which is kind of an unusual term, Et Achiv Hevel, right? And she continued to give birth to Hevel. And the fact that the apostle did not say vatar, meaning she became pregnant again and gave birth to heaven, that teaches us that what? That both kind and heaven were twins. Now, based on that logic, and which is a careful understanding of the psukim, then we can understand, now we're going to have a bunch of opinions about how many kids are that, at that point, right? Either they had one, I'm sorry, two, like Kain and, and his twin sister, or Hevel, and his twin sister, one twin sister, later on. So that's two pregnancies, each had a total of four kids at that point. Or another option is two pregnancies, and then we have five kids because Havel had two twin sisters. Or according to this explanation, there was either four babies together, two girls, two boys, in same at the same birth, or if we take this idea and combine it with this, that means five babies together, three girls, two boys. Okay, and which is, by the way, not completely unheard of, rare, yes. Let's see how the Abarbanel continues and explain that. So the Abarbanel says the following. How that's possible that Chava, that Eve, had five babies together at one birth, they gave birth in one time to five babies. And if this is some sort of a miracle, then why did the Torah doesn't tell us about that? The Torah tells us about the other miracles, right? Like Chava, Eve was created from the rib of Adam. So this is also like pretty amazing, um, pretty amazing uh, miracle. Remember, this is the days before IVF. How come the Torah didn't talk about that? And he says the following, Gam einor achok etzli. This is not so unheard of. This is not so distant. Rachok, distant. Sheyada et chava ishto kodem tzeta min hagan. Said, here's the following. Adam and Eve had relations before they were, before they left the Garden of Eden. Veshehi harta sham kain vehevel teomim veachyotehem. And she became pregnant with Cain and Havel, twins, and their twin sisters. Ki yino zar etzel hateva, because it is, perhaps it's not common, but it is not something um, unnatural or something that goes against nature. Sheteled ha'isha daled o hei vladot, that a woman will have four, or even five babies. And according to the doctors, up to seven babies at one birth is possible. He said, even more so, in the beginning of creation, we're talking about different conditions. The blessing of God was on them. They were not cursed yet. 
it was unusual to some extent supernatural existence in the Garden of Eden. These are, Adam and Eve were people that created by God himself. And they were born, not as babies, they were born as young adults, like about 20 year old people. And they were extremely healthy, extremely strong, both spiritually and physically. And because of the need to populate the world, God wanted God wanted Eve to have as many babies as possible as soon as possible. And therefore, he gave her multiple um, babies. He said, if we accept the fact that the father was born from the earth, right? And the mother was created not in a natural way, but rather from the rib, then why we, can't we accept that the children also populated or, were, or had those, those, um, those uh, ability to, pop, to, to procreate, not in the natural way? So in that time that Adam and Eve were together, still in the Garden of Eden, and she became pregnant from, um, you know, right away in the first time, and with twins. And what, and you have to accept what the Midrash says, <coughs> that Cain and Hevel had twin sisters. You have to accept it. Rationally, you have to accept it. Who am it? Why? Because otherwise, who did they marry? Who did they have babies with? Not only that, later on we we'll read about Cain and he had a wife. And then I he said that it's written in the other books. I don't know exactly what books he was referring to. Something like that. Beteomot Hevel Shehi Ishto Haita Shma Balbira. Said I found in some other books. I don't know what books he was referring to. Um, some sort of a apocrypha, I guess, or some midrashim, or some, I don't know what kind of books he's referring to, that the name of Cain's twin, who was also his wife, her name was Klamana or something like that, and the twin of Hevel that was also his wife was Balbira. Umudivrei Yosefon, Yosefon obviously is, is uh, the Greek uh, historian. He said you can you can perhaps also justify based on the pasuk. Later on, when we have a pasuk that says, Ze sefer toldot adam, perhaps there is a hint there teaching us that after Shet, i.e., the third son that was born to Adam and Eve, he had, Adam and Eve had additional um, children, and perhaps uh, we're talking about those were the, um, um, the additional kids that we're talking about. Okay, fine. Let's summarize what we have so far. Oh, 
here is a, also a, uh, the Maharsha brings a, uh, a uh, Midrash that appears in the Baba Batra, it says the following. Teomale kainu, teomale heaven. Right, so this is what the Midrash that we learned, that there was one twin sister for Kain and one twin sister with heaven. The Katua Tosfot, however, the Tosfot explain a Midrash, we're going to see the Midrash later on, Ve'yardu arba'a, meaning the Midrash says two went to the bed and four came down from the bed. Okay, we understand Adam and Eve went to bed and when they came from the bed, came out of the bed, there were four, yeah, because she was pregnant with two. Adam ve'chava ve'kain utiomato, meaning Adam and Chava and Cain and his twin sister. Aval Hevel lo nolad pam. However, Hevel was born, or Chava was actually pregnant with Hevel in a different time, later on. Because the Pasuk says, but Tosef, she continued to give birth to Hevel, to his brother Hevel. And Hevel had two twin sisters, Et, Achiv, Et, Hevel, right? We learned that, meaning that the word Et is a hint for additional uh, babies. So if we can summarize what we have so far, we have two opinions. One that says that Kain and Edel were twins. Opinion, the other opinion says, no, they were not twins, i.e. two different pregnancies in which Kain and Hevel were born. Okay, we can explain now that each had one female twin. And as we can see, there's another opinion that says what? The Kain had one female twin and Abel had two female twins. And, um, and of course, as we explained based on the, uh, the Pasuk here, that has nothing to do with twins, but these are kids that were born later on. So you can, all the opinions are five babies in one pregnancy, four babies in one pregnancy, two babies in one pregnancy, five <laughs> different or, or four different uh, births. All combinations are possible to explain that phenomena, how Kain and Hevel had women to um, have babies with, or actually Kain, not Hevel. We'll see in a second why. Okay. Question. Was Cain married before the sin, i.e., before he killed Hevel? Okay. Well, it's unclear. Here's what we do know. The Pasuk says the following. Bayeda Kain et Ishto, Kain was with his wife. He knew his wife. And she became pregnant, Batar, Batele de Chanoch, and she gave birth to Chanoch. Vahi Bonair, and Kain built a city, and he called and he named the city after his son Chanoch. What the Rambam, and that's a pasuk from, from, from uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 17. The Rambam on that pasuk says the following. Very interesting. What is the reason that he built a city and he named the city after his son? Because in the beginning, he thought he's not going to have any children because of his sin. However, However, when he had, later on, when he had a son, he started to build a city, so his son then have a place to live in. Meaning, according to the Ramban, what? He was not married, he didn't have any children until at the time of the sin. Only after the sin, only afterwards, 
he start he start that. Okay, that's um, that's the Ramban. Definitely didn't have kids before. Maybe he had a wife. We don't know. Um, Ramban continues. What happened later on with Cain? Okay, so we know that Cain was punished. Sorry. We know that Cain was punished. And um, what happened to Cain? So Ramban continues and he says the following. Karet He saw that all of his descendants died. We're going to talk about it in a second. And also, what else we know about Kain? Everything he tried didn't work out. He was able to build only a little with a lot of effort. And he was traveling from one place to the other. And he goes back and he tries again and nothing works. And that was his sin. So if Cain's wife, that's, um, you know, she was his uh, sister, we can assume that what? She didn't have, we can assume that, uh, I'm going to stop the sharing here for a sec. We can assume, we can assume that she had very difficult life. Um, not only that he was the first murderer, he was also a, a difficult and probably kind of a, like, not like the nicest guy ever. Um, and, um, and he had to wander from one place to other, never like, you know, was traveling constantly. That was part of the curse that, that God gave him. And uh, we don't really know exactly what was the, um, punishment that he received, uh, what was the ot kind, like, you know, he had some sort of a mark, right? God said that, that because he, he complained and he said, anyone who's going to see me is going to kill me. So like, I need some sort of a protection. And God gave, told him, gave him some sort of a, a mark. Right? God says to him, don't worry, you'll have a specific mark, something about it that, that people would know not to kill you. Okay, nonetheless, that, that's not our um, discussion. Our discussion is that she probably had very difficult life with him, um, but he was probably like excommunicated and he was traveling, nothing worked out for him. And also he watched or witnessed the death of all his descendants. Um, that's one opinion that the Ramban is, is quoting. The other opinion is said that he was actually was a very righteous person and he believed in God and he, he had communi direct communication with God and he made tshuva. And, um, and it was actually, um, he started the world but whatever he was doing, it was not successful. Right? Nothing actually worked for him. Whatever he was doing, it didn't work. There's actually, um, I'm just gonna uh, go back to um, share the screen here. That explains Here. Here is a interesting. Uh, the midrash says the following: Lelamedcha, shekeshem shaitak zera al kain, just like the curse was on kain himself. Kita avodet adama lo tosef tet kochalach. Right? God says to kain, part of his curse was even though you work the soil, you're going to work in the ground. Lo tosef tet kochalach. The the uh, the ground is not going to cooperate, not going to listen to you. It's not going to give you its power, right? 
קוץ ודרדרת צמיח לך. You're going to try to plan things and nothing is going to work. נא ונא תהיה בארץ, you're going to wander from one place to the other. כך הייתה גזרה על כל תולדותיו. The Midrash says that what? That this punishment was not only on Cain himself, but rather on all his descendants. ולא הצליחו עוד בעבודת האדמה. And they were unable to produce anything from the ground, from the soil. ותפסו אומנות אחרת. And therefore they were forced to other occupations. וזהו שנאמר, לא תש כל חורש נחושת וברזל. Right? There's a very unusual פסוק that says about יבל and תובל, they were descendants of Cain, לא תש כל חורש נחושת וברזל, that they were dealing with metals. And you ask yourself, why this is important, what they were doing, right? And that's the, what the Midrash is trying to explain is why, because they had no choice. They were unsuccessful as farmers. They were not able to produce anything from the ground. And therefore, they were forced to look for other um, ways to make a living. Now, what happened with Cain? So seven generations go by. And let's continue with realizing like what happened with Cain. And because that's important if you, you know, happened to Cain, that's also has to do with his wife. Kalamana, whatever her name was. Rav Eliyahu Kitov teaches us the following. That these were difficult people and they were not in the image of Adam. The descendants of Cain were not in the image of Adam. But rather in a different way. They were different in their character but, and also physically. This was of an angelic face, not in a, in a positive way angelic. It could be like also a bad angel, right? They were not human to some extent or just like as a metaphoric way. And they had greater power and greater strength, physical strength than any average person. And those descendants of Cain, they were excommunicated by the descendants of Adam and Shet. Because Shet told his children, <laughs> Do not mix with the descendants of Cain, i.e. with your cousins. Don't marry with them. However, since they were so strong, they were able to overcome the descendants of Shet. And they just took those women without permission. Anyone that they wanted. And perhaps that's try to explain what does it mean, Bnei Elohim. It's not really those angelic, but rather these are the descendants of Cain that took whatever, that they took whatever women that they wanted. And this, these are the people that created or brought the world and and humankind into that condition, there were such big sin, and there were so, such sinners in the time of the, gener the generation of the flood, <laughs> that because of wicked, their wickedness, the flood came into the world. So what do we have here? As I said, as I said before, right, we had Adam and uh, Adam and Eve had Cain and Hevel. Hevel was killed, no kids, right? Because we don't know anything about kids that Hevel had, so we can assume that he didn't have any kids. Cain had kids, and we, in the Torah actually lists those kids, right? The generation after generation after generation. And what the rabbis are trying to figure out 
if this world was just created by God, how is it possible that in such a short time, the world was so bad that it had to be erased in the, this coming week's Parsha, in the flood? What's going on? How that's possible? And how do we explain all this population and what's going on over there? And people are taking women and what's, what's going on? And they say basically the following. They say, well, there were two families, the family of Cain. They were like the bad people. <laughs> they were strong. They were they were they had they were strong they 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 were horrible people whatever you want to call it okay and it was like the other family the descendants of shet and not only the descendants of shet according to the midrash there were like other kids that adam and adam and eve had after shet but without getting even even into that so you have like the two families shet and kind. What happened to the people, the family of kind, all those super strong people, nasty people? They all died in the flood. These are all the bad people that filled the world. That's the people of the descendants of kind. And kind, part of his curse was that he witnessed all of them die. According mm -hmm. to this opinion, kind himself died in the flood. Okay? So therefore, all humankind, all people now in the world are descendants of Kain. Shet. As Nobody stayed from Kain. Oh, right. In a way, <laughs> because Kain was so bad, Kain is the first murderer, Kain is a nasty person, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's almost that God says, I need to, I need to restart. Restarting is not only the physical world, it means I'm getting rid of all the bad people. All the bad people, that means all the people of kind. I'm getting rid of that. I'm starting humankind again. Oh, this time, not from Adam, but no. from Shed. Okay? So all the descendants are, so we are all descendants of Shet. Nobody stayed from the original twins or not twins, definitely the two brothers, Cain and Hevel. <clears throat> Nothing stayed. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of discussion about that. You know, sure. Why and what does it mean and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, let, let's just kind of continue. And then like, if you have any questions, Miriam. I do. I, yes, yeah. I do. Um, in the Tanakh, we, we just read, we just read Midrashim, right? But in the Tanakh itself, does not hint, or maybe I'm wrong, it doesn't say that Cain was a bad, negative person. It says this, that when they both brought their offerings, God turned away from Cain made him feel very bad and only turned toward Hevel. So, and actually, of course, there was immediate sibling rivalry, of course, but it was not Cain's fault. It was God who turned from him very obviously to make Cain so angry that Cain killed Hevel. Okay, now, here we go. But it doesn't I, say any of this. I, 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 I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm going to, it's an excellent point. I'm going to talk about it in three minutes, okay? Just sure. a tiny bit. Or of next patience. time. Or next time. No, it's no, no, okay. No, it's, part, it's, it's part of something that I wanted to that I wanted to discuss today. Okay. Just give me a, a second to look. Yeah, yeah, Shoshana. So, uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, twins make perfect medical gene genealogical sense because. Fraternal twins can be totally different uh, in their chromosome sets. But these were not twins. So I there's no. They were not twins. Okay, wait a minute. So there's no intermarriage, really. It's two different people always get married. Okay. Okay. 
Interesting. Number two, I have exactly the opposite idea about Cain, and I'll talk to you after you talk about him because okay. God did God did not hate him. I didn't say that God hated him. I'm just. I like, didn't say that either. Yeah. So these are, okay. these are, this is one way to explain. I'm just no. like you know. I'm just like bringing the sources, but I want to give you my take on that stuff. God tests all the time. He tests himself and he tests the people. Because the first test was Adam. He knew he was bad. Now he starts testing the two, the two, the two sons. And he had a soft point for, for, for Cain because he was the first. And okay. so it goes. I have a long theory. And yesterday I told it all to, um, to Hanagu. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're going gonna, gonna, to gonna continue with that. Let, let me just go back to... To this, and I promise you, I'm going to touch on that. According to a different midrash, <coughs> what happened to Cain? Lemech ben bno ledorot v'suma. So, if you look at the at the Chumash, you will see that the seventh generation was a guy named Lemech of Cain. Okay, seventh generation down from Cain, and. Uh, I'm sorry, from Adam. So it's like the six, I think, from Cain. Anyway, and he was blind. And he used to go hunting, and he was, and um, he had a, his little uh, child was leading him because he was blind. And when that uh, child saw an animal, he would have told him, look, 12 o'clock, you know, at 12 o'clock, there is an animal, and he used to shoot an arrow, whatever that is. I don't think they had guns back then. No. So he told them, one day, he told them, I see something. I'm not too sure exactly what I see. I, I think it's, a, it's an animal. So he shoot an arrow, and he killed Kain. Obviously, there was a mistake in identifying kind. He thought, like that child thought was an animal. So then they realized that um, that was kind because he had this odd kind, he had this um, mark that everybody knew that was kind. comes to teach you, he said, look, uh-oh, what I see is um, a person, but had a Karen. And the simple explanation is that he had some sort of a horn. So this is why he thought it was an animal. He said, uh-oh, what did I do? This is, this is my ancestor. And they were the three of them together. Kain harug, v'oto tinok harug, v'lemech suma. Lemech needed to cover his, um, what happened, and therefore he decided to kill that boy as well. So, Oof. yes. Um, so Kain is dead, that boy is dead, and Lemech is standing there blind. La'erev yatsu nashav acharav, and in the evening, the wives went to look, and they found, and they found him uh, dead. Okay. So according to this midrash, what it's not that Cain died in the flood, but rather he died as a result of an accident. Okay. The question is now why. If nobody stayed, if no one remained from the family of Cain, then why the Torah goes on and on and explains like all, all those descendants of Cain and all that kind of stuff? Who cares? They all died, whether it's before the flood or whatever that is, um, we don't really care. All of humankind continued from Shet. So why, why the Torah goes on there? And the Ramban explains the following. And why do we learn about Cain and his, what he did and, and, and his descendants? To teach us that God is a merciful one. 
כי הוליד בנים ובני בנים, והזכיר כי פוקד עוון אבות על בנים. And God gave kind the ability to have children. However, at the same time, God does not forget. And it doesn't, and there are consequences to, your, to one's actions. V'nichrat zar'o. And therefore, eventually, nobody was left from his descendants. V'rabotenu amru. And the rabbi said in the different Midrash, Shechaya shanim rabot, umed bamabul, that he lived actually many years and died only in the flood. Velo rit sevato b'shalom she'ol. However, he did not have a great time. Rak ra'abi kared hu v'chol zaro ito, but rather he witnessed the death of his entire family. V'akarov, And if you actually count, you'll see that it was only six generations until the flood. And why did he tell us all those stories? You know what's the reason why we need to know all those stories? Because we need to know who were the first builders and who is the first person to build a city. and shepherds, and musicians, and people that dealt with metals. And basically what the Ramban is trying to teach us something very, very important. He said, it's not about kind. It's not about his descendants. It's not about all that stuff, but rather it's about the advancement of humankind. And even though those people did not survive perhaps, however, These are the inventors. These are the people that brought us, that gave us, that gave us metal. These are the people that gave us music. These are the people that, that started building um, cities. And therefore, that's important. That is important to, for you to know. Not about kind. Now, I want to digress from that and um, go into this, I, this discussion that both Shoshana and Miriam Uh, brought. And for that, I'm going to go, I'm going to share my screen again. Yes, Miriam? I'm sorry. I have a 12 o'clock Zoom. Okay. Uh, and I'm late for it. So please forgive me. And I enjoyed your shiur very much. Thank you. No need to apologize. We, we enjoy to have you. Yes, I hope <laughs> to be here next week. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the Pasuk, the way the Torah describes it. ויהי מקץ ימים, ויבא קין מפרי אדמה מנחל השם. קין ברוט אי קורבן, ברוט אי גיפט, ווטאבר יו וואנה קולט, תו הקדוש ברוך הוא, וסתיו דתי גרו. והבל הביא גם הוא מבחור רצונו ומחיל והן. And also הבל ברוט פרום, you know, his sheep. ויהי שעה השם אל הבל ואל מנחתו ואל קין מנחתו לא שעה. And השם turn whatever that means, into Hevel and his mincha, his gift, however, not to the one that was brought by Cain. And Cain felt really bad, or perhaps he was upset, etc. His face fell, right? Yeah, this... Yeah. What we call in Yiddish, you know, Tisha B'Av Punim. You know, it's like face of... of Like, you know, it's like those sour face. Right. God says to Cain, why are you so upset? Why? And why the sour, why the long face? And he says, the, and they're like inks, rivers of ink were, were, were spilled over this. Haloim tetiv said, v'im lo tetiv, l'petach ata atrovetz, ve'elech atishukato v'ata timshol bo. Okay, here's the translation. I'm not going to say right or wrong. Surely if you do right, there is uplift. But if you do not do right, sin coaches at the door. It's urge it toward you. You can, yet you can be its master. And then Cain said, 
something to AWOL, we don't know exactly what, and they were in the field, and Kine gets up and kills AWOL. Okay. A, by the way, just like to put it in, in parentheses over there, um, something that uh, Rabbi Golden, used to be the rabbi in, uh, in uh, Tinef, said very cute about that. He says, you know why, it said, why the Torah doesn't tell us why? Why, you know, what did he say? You know, what did he say to him? Because it's, what did he tell him? Kain said something to Hevel, but what, what, what is it? But the Torah doesn't, the Torah leaves it blank. And he said, you know why? Because it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It could be anything. Any thing that you're going to put there is going to create some sort of justification. And the Torah wants to tell you there is no justification for murder. So it really doesn't matter what he said to him. You can't justify murder, no matter what, which is a very um, powerful idea and, and resonates with me. Now, I, there are a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of, of different opinions. I'm just gonna bring this Midrash and then I'm gonna tell, tell you my own take on that. So the Midrash says the following, right? The Midrash is trying to deal with that. What exactly was that they talked about? They said, let's, it's the two of us, so let's divide the world. One said, you know what? I'm going to take all the land. And the other, said, the other one said, fine, I'm going to take all the commodities. I'm going to take everything else. Deina marar, ah, de'at kaim ala didi, bedeina marar, ma delavesh didi. So if everything belongs to me, and all the land belongs to my brother, so the one that owns the land says, you are standing on my land. So the other one said, well, everything that you have, and even what you wear belongs to me. So he said to him, take off, take off your clothes because that belongs to me. He said to him, Prach. So he said, you know what? You're standing on my land. Why don't you fly? Because you know, you can't stand on my land. Because of that, so they were fighting. Because they were fighting, then an outcome of that of because of that they were fighting, he, he got up and he killed them. That's one uh, opinion in, in, the, in the Midrash. Rabbi Yosua Neschanin b'shem Rabbi Levi Amar, different opinion says, Shneem not lo karkaot, or Shneem not lo mitaltalin. He said, no. They decided to divide the world by which both owned land and um, all the other commodities. They split it 50-50. So therefore, what was the, what were they fighting about? One said, the temple is going to be built in my territory. And the other said, no, uh, Beit HaMikdash is going to be built in my land. And that, how did the rabbi derive to this idea? Ben Sadeh El Abayt HaMikdash. Because the Pasuk says, when they were in the field, and the word Basadeh, field, is a reference to Beit HaMikdash because there's a different Pasuk that talks about Beit HaMikdash as a field. Okay. And therefore, because of that, because they were fighting, Kain killed Evel. Yehuda Bar Ami, a third opinion, Amar, a different opinion, but rather, who has the right to be with Chava? Okay, according to this Midrash, there's nothing about the twins, and they both needed to have children. The only woman in the world was Chava, and they were fighting who's going to have Chava. So, come Rabbi Aivu. And it says the following, ah, 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 no way. Chava was already dead by then. 
So they were not fighting about her. So what was the reason for their fight? You know, they were fighting for? What we learned about the extra twin. Right, the extra twin, that was the problem, that was the reason why they were fighting, and that is, um, is the reason for the, um, uh, the fact that Cain mm -hmm. killed Hevel. Now, I'm gonna stop the sharing here, and I'm just gonna... Um, uh, hold on. Okay, I just wanna find a note that I have. Shoshana, you had something to say here? Shoshana? Oh, uh, you know, I, I started, God start testing Adam with the, with the tree of, with the tree of uh, uh, knowing good and bad. And uh, so he failed it. So he waited for the second generation that he started uh, with Cain. And he yeah. failed it too. And then, he, and then it didn't continue until he found Noah. And then there was like issues with after Noah. And like, you know, God continues with that and goes to Moshe, Rabbeinu, etc. Yes. And a flippant and flippant thing. It's always the woman's fault. It's always the woman involved. Shershe la femme. Because it's not because of a, f a fight of women. Um, <laughs> <It's only> women. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think that there's a lot of uh, a lot of fighting um, and definitely murder. And because she would make a happen because of women. So yeah. and uh, she would make a wonderful soap opera. Oh yeah, and definitely. And there were actually a couple of, couple of operas were written about this story. Okay, but I wanted guys to, um, as a last thought for today, what I want to do is to share with you my own take on this uh, story of the fighting between Kain and Hevel. Yeah, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, there's millions of other opinions. Um, this is the way I look at that. So the Pesach says, Hashem accept the gift, the Korban of Hevel and rejects the one brought by kind, right? So what does it mean that God accept the gift or the korban of, um, of Hevel but, and reject the one by, by kind? What exactly does it mean? It means that it was consumed, right? God consumed, ate the mincha, the korban brought by Hevel, but not the one by Cain, right? Rashi tells us that what? Fire came from the heaven and consumed, just like a korbanot in Beit HaMikdash later on, fire came from the heaven and consumed the korban that was brought by Hevel. And what happened to the fruit, vegetables and fruit that were brought by Cain? What happened to them? Nothing. No. Nothing, okay. right? Yeah. Fine. Let's think about it for a second. So what's going on here? Kain and Hevel, each in a different corner. Fire comes, boom. The whatever sheep, goat, whatever was gone that was brought by Hevel, burnt, and the fruit vegetables by kind sitting there in the corner and nothing happens. But is it that nothing happens? Maybe something is happening. If you're gonna take vegetables, you're gonna put them in the corner of the room and you're gonna wait a day, two, three, a month, two, what's gonna happen? It's gonna Rust. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna become rotten. Uh -huh. It's gonna, you know, eventually it's going to dissolve into the earth. Right? He doesn't see that miracle. It's a different form of being consumed, not by fire, 
It's not the same method. It's not the same timeline, but it's also going through the same process eventually. That's what's going to happen to the fruit and the vegetables, just like the poor goat. The end result is going to be that the fruits and vegetables are going to be dissolved. They're going to be rotten and going to be dissolved. Just like, just like the goat. He doesn't see that miracle because it's so slow, because it's different. You see the immediate, the immediate miracle, boom, fire comes, boom, boom, boom. He sees that. But he doesn't see the miracle that happens in a gradual, natural, long process. He doesn't see God in everything. He sees God only in isolated, short incident. That's the shortcoming of kind. And what I'm suggesting is that God was talking to kind. Kain was not listening. He's not getting it. He doesn't understand. And Kain was not able to hear. Now take, now this is another fascinating idea. Rabbi Green is going to love this. If you're going to take this word of Korban, right? Korban, and you play with those letters, you're going to get another word. Mirkav, rotten. It's the same word. It's the same process in a different method, in a different way. The outcome is going to be the same. So God is saying, when God says to Cain, Hallo im teitiv, etc., he's saying to him, don't depend, don't limit your connection with me only through that korban, only through that particular method in the way that you expect it to be answered, the way that you expect your philo to be answered, the way you see your connection with me. You need to see it in all different ways. We say, panim there are different ways to worship. There are different ways to interpret things. Because if you're not going to do that, and you're going to limit yourself to one way only of looking at things, then you're not, your korban is not going to be accepted. It's going to be a nirkav. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. It's going to hurt you. And this is happening, which is very difficult to, exp to, to accept. This is all happening. God is talking to, to Cain, all that stuff. He's, telling, he's sending him that message while he's accepting the offering, the Korban of Hevel. So this difference between accepting the way things are happening to me, the way God is talking to me, the way God is dealing with me, while he's dealing in a different way with somebody else, and that's the way I want it with God, is very difficult to accept. But that's exactly yet what God wants us. God wants us to understand there are many ways to worship. There are many ways to send your korban. There are many ways in which your actions count. But if you think that this going to, there's only one way and that's your friend's, your brother's way, then you're missing the whole point. You need to find your own voice and your own way of doing things. That means you have to understand, guy, Cain has a direct line with God. God is talking to him directly. He's not talking to Hevel even. He's talking to Cain. But Cain is so consumed by this idea. I want like Hevel. I want the fire show. I want the fire from heaven. That he doesn't even see it. That what? God is talking to him. He's not talking to Hevel. That's even a greater miracle than the fire. But he doesn't get it. He wants like Hevel. I told you many times, guys, that, you know, my... When I think about examples, um, so it comes from the world of children. I have four little kids and it's like, you know, so 
That's my example that pops into my head. So do my kids uh, fight? It sometimes it makes no sense. I won't like her, like, you know, but it, it, it's a better toy. You can play with this bigger doll. No, 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 I want hers. I want like hers, you know? I, that's exactly what's happening here. There's no logic. There's no, try to, you have a better toy. This is a broken toy. No, 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 I want her toy. Why? Because I won't like hers. No, that's exactly what happens here. Kain wants like heaven. He doesn't understand that he's got a direct, line of communication with God. He's not listening. He's not hearing. He doesn't understand. It's the same korban. It's nirkav. It's the same idea. It's a different form in which God accepts his mincha. It's a different war. It's a different format. It's a natural process. It's a longer process. It's a way, it's a different way to, and he's not listening. He's not getting it. He's not, because he wants just like Hebel. And um, the take, my take from that is, bottom line is that people hear what they want to hear, okay? And what they want to hear, they think is justified and right. And perhaps if the message in our mind, what we hear is too easy, it's too perfect, it's too convenient, it works, everything works exactly the way you know, we should be suspicious and perhaps yeah. the interpretation that we give to something is not the right one. There are many ways to, to achieve something. You know, it's sometimes very, very difficult and frustrating to see other people succeed while it's not happening to us. And you say, why, why, God, why, why, why it's not happening to me? And not realizing that there's different avenues, different, different ways. Sometimes it's a korban, sometimes it's in irkav, but it, it's still a weight, you know, and, and that's exactly the point. Kain didn't get that. He didn't understand that. That was his failure. And he didn't realize that he achieved actually more than heaven. He had a direct line of communication with God. That's the important part. And he didn't even see it. He didn't even notice that because he was so consumed with I want exactly like Hevel and not realizing what he himself was uh, getting. So that's, uh, that's it for today. Um, I, uh, if you like this interpretation about that, then use it. If not, as I said, there, um, there were rivers of ink that were written about uh, that incident. Um, next, uh, next time we're going to go back to, uh, um, uh, another hidden women, um, and uh, it's going to be somebody from uh, the later part of Tanakh. Um, I haven't finalized that, but we will. It's going to be very interesting, and I'm looking forward to uh, see you all next time. Just going to remind that um, if you would like to uh, come here and do that in person, we have. Uh, room for 10 individuals to come to the silver, uh, the silver sukkah. Um, it's outdoors and whatever. And if you're interested, please um, write to me, canter at betjacob.org or to the office, front desk at betjacob.org and we will accommodate and we're gonna uh, make sure we, as I said, we have only room for 10. Everybody else uh, will do it on um, um, over Zoom. So if you want to come, we'd love to see you next week. Same place, same time. And Thank you. On Zoom. Can I say something? Can I say something? <laughs>